Hi everyone, before I start this video, make sure that you're a part of my Discord server by joining the link in the description box below. And in this video, we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2024, February March, Paper 4 2, Question Number 2. This is the structured paper 4, which consists of two questions. Each of them will be of 25 marks, and the total time limit given for this paper is 1 hour. So ideally, you should be spending about 30 minutes in order to solve each question. And in this video as well, we'll be attempting to solve question number 2 under 30 minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. SPLC operates a system of standard costing. It provided the following budgeted data for January 2024. We have the production and sales to be 8,000 units with a selling price of 68 per unit. The direct material required is 3 kilos per unit, costing 4 per kilo. It means that the direct material per unit will be 3 times 4, which results in 12. The direct labor required is 4 hours per unit, paid at 6 per hour. It means that the direct labor per unit will be 4 times 6, which results in 24. And for fixed overheads, it will be charged at 2.5 per direct labor hour. So in this case, this 2.5 will act as our overhead absorption rate based on the direct labor hour. In January 2024, only 7,000 units were produced and sold. So this is the actual units. Let's take a look at our first question. We need to prepare for January 2024 in a columnar format, the fixed budget and the flexible budget statement. Our answer should include the fixed budget profit or loss for the month and the flexible budget profit or loss for the month. Okay, so we can start our fixed budget here and the flexible budget here. Now for fixed budget, we use the budgeted per unit values and multiply it by the budgeted number of units as well. But for the flexible budget, we use our budgeted per unit values but multiply it by the actual units. That's the only difference. So we can first start with the revenue or the sales value. Let's take a look above. The budgeted per unit selling price is 68, whereas our budgeted number of units is 8,000 and the actual units is 7,000. So we can use these three information in order to get the sales value for our fixed budget as well as the flexible budget. For the fixed one, we need the budgeted per unit value, which is 68, multiplied by the budgeted units, which is 8,000. So 8,000 times 68 results in the value of 544,000. Then for the flexible budget, the budgeted per unit value is 68 and the actual units is 7000. So 7000 times 68 results in the value of 476,000. Now we just need to subtract all of our costs from the revenue. The very first cost would be the direct material. And we have already calculated the per unit value. So the budgeted per unit direct material is 12. Now the value for our fixed budget will be 12 times 8,000 units, which results in 96,000. And for the flexible budget, it will be 12 times 7,000, which is the actual units, so 84,000. We repeat the same process for direct labor. Now the direct labor per unit is 24. Okay. So for our fixed budget, that will be 24 times 8,000, which results in 192,000. And for the flexible budget, it will be 24 times 7,000, which results in 168,000. The last one is our fixed overheads. And for the fixed overheads, we have the value per direct labor hour. So we first need to convert it to per unit. And we know that each unit will require four hours of direct labor. It means that the per unit fixed overheads will just be the value per direct labor hour, which is 2.5, multiplied by the hours per unit, which is four. This results in 10. And here this 10 is the required budgeted per unit value. So for the fixed budget, it will be 10 times 8,000, which results in 80,000. And for the flexible budget, it will be 10 times 7,000, which results in 70,000. 
Now we can easily calculate the profit or loss for the month. For our fixed budget, that will be 544,000 minus 96,000 minus 192,000 minus 80,000, which results in 176,000. And for the flexible budget, that will be 476,000 minus 84,000 minus 168,000 minus 70,000, which results in 154,000. That is all for the first part. Let's move towards the second one. We have additional information. The actual results for January 2024 included the following. We have the information for direct material and direct labor. We have the total values and the direct material per unit is 3.1 kilos and the direct labor rate per hour is 5.8. Now we need to calculate the following variances. The first one is direct material price. So since this is a price variance, we need to compare our standard price to the actual price. So the formula will be standard price minus the actual price. And remember, the price will be per kilo since we're talking about direct material. And we need to multiply it by the actual quantity. Okay. So our standard price per kilo is 4, which is given right here. Then the actual price per kilo. Okay, we only have the kilos per unit. So we need to figure out the actual price as well. So 4 is the standard price. Now for the actual price per kilo. So we know that the total direct material is 82,460. And if we divide it by the total actual quantity, we can get the price per kilo. So the actual quantity in this case, we know that each unit required 3.1 kilos. And the total actual unit was given to be 7,000. This results in 21,700. That is the actual quantity. Now if we divide the total direct material by the actual quantity, we get the actual price per kilo to be of 3.8. And the logic behind this is that the total value of 82,460, we get this by multiplying the actual price to the actual quantity, where actual quantity is the total quantity and the actual price is the price per unit. Now, our actual price is 3.8. The actual quantity is 21,700. This results in the direct material price variance to have the value of 4,340. And since this is a positive value, we consider this to be a favorable variance. Now, for the second one, we need to calculate the direct material uses variance. For uses, we need to compare the quantities. So, standard quantity minus the actual quantity. And remember, the quantities will be in total. But for standard quantity, we have to transform it so that it reflects the total quantity required for the actual unit rather than the standard units. Then, we need to multiply it by the standard price per kilo. Okay. So, for the standard quantity, Let's take a look at our budgeted information. We know that each unit will require 3 kilos, right? But we need to transform it such that we get the total quantity for the actual units. So in order to do so, we can just multiply this 3 by the actual units of 7,000. So that will be 3 times 7,000, which results in 21,000. That will be the standard quantity or the flexed quantity. Then we've already calculated the actual quantity to be 21,700 and the standard price given was 4. This results in the direct material uses to have the value of negative 2,800. Since this is negative, this will be an adverse variance. That is all for the second one. Now we need to calculate the direct labor rate variance. Again, we need to compare the standard rate to our actual rate. So standard rate minus actual rate. And remember, these will be the rate per hour, and we need to multiply it by the actual total hours. Okay. Let's take a look above. The standard rate per hour is 6. Then, the actual rate per hour is 5.8. Okay. So, we have 6 and 5.8. Now, for the actual hours, again, we repeat a similar process. We have the total of 182,700 if we divide it by our actual price or actual rate per hour we can get the actual hours itself so that will be 182,700 divided by 5.8 which results in the actual hours of 31,500 this results in the direct labor rate variance to have the value of positive 6,300 
since this is positive we consider to be a favorable variance now we need to calculate the direct labor efficiency variance for efficiency we will be comparing the hours so the standard hour minus actual hour and multiplied by the standard rate okay again remember this standard hour is supposed to be the flexed hour so in order to calculate this we can first get our budgeted hours per unit which is 4 multiplied by the actual units of 7000 so that will be 4 times 7000 which results in the value of 28000 so 28000 is our standard hour the actual hours we've just calculated it to be 31500 and the standard rate per hour is 6. This gives our direct labor efficiency variance to have the value of negative 21,000. So that will be an adverse variance. That is all for this part. Let's move towards the next one. Now the actual fixed overheads for the month amounted to 78,000. The fixed overhead expenditure variance was 2,000 favorable and the fixed overhead volume variance was 10,000 adverse. We need to explain why the fixed overhead volume variance was adverse. Our answer should consider the sub variances of the fixed overhead volume variance but calculation of these is not required. So the first sub variance of the fixed overhead volume variance will be our fixed overhead capacity variance where we compare the actual direct labor hours to the budgeted direct labor hours and multiply the difference by the overhead absorption rate. Let's write it down. The fixed overhead capacity variance is calculated by comparing the actual direct labor hours let us also write down the figure for the actual direct labor hour which is 31500 to the budgeted direct labor hours Let's calculate the budgeted direct labor hours as well. For the budgeted direct labor hours, we use the hours per unit, the budgeted hours per unit as well as the budgeted units itself. So that will be 4 times 8,000, which results in 32,000. That will be our budgeted direct labor hours. And multiply the difference. by overhead absorption rate in this case we can clearly see that the actual direct labor hour is lower than the budgeted direct labor hours which is why the fixed overhead capacity variance will also be adverse so since actual direct labor hours is lower than budgeted direct labor hours the fixed overhead capacity variance will be adverse and this is further due to the fact that our actual units is lower than the budgeted units since the budgeted units were 8000 whereas the actual units were only 7000 so this is further due to lower actual output than the budgeted output since we have lower output we also require lower number of direct labor hours now the second sub variance of fixed overhead volume variance is the fixed overhead efficiency variance where we compare the flexed direct labor hours to our actual direct labor hours and multiply the difference by overhead absorption rate so the fixed overhead efficiency variance is calculated by comparing the flexed direct labor hours and the flexed direct labor hours in this case was 28,000 that is the standard hours but for the actual output to the 
actual direct labor hours which was 31,500 and multiply the difference by overhead absorption rate and we can clearly see that the flexed hours is lower than the actual hours which is why our fixed overhead efficiency variance will also be adverse so since flexed direct labor hour is lower than the actual direct labor hours the fixed overhead efficiency variance will be adverse and this might further be due to the use of less skilled labor because we can see that for the budgeted information we only require 28,000 direct labor hours but in reality we use more direct labor hours and that might be due to the uses of less skilled labor so this might be the case due to the use of less skilled labor now finally since both the sub variances are adverse our fixed overhead volume variance was also adverse since both sub variances were adverse the fixed overhead volume variance was also adverse all right that is all for the third part let's move towards the next one the company has been preparing sales, production, purchases and labor budgets for several years. It has now been suggested that the company should also prepare a budget for trade receivables and trade payables. We now need to advise the directors whether or not the company should start to prepare budgets for trade receivables and trade payables. We need to justify our answer. Okay, the first thing that you need to know is that the trade receivables and trade payables budgets are prepared in order to get the closing balance of the trade receivables and trade payables for a certain time period. So these should only be prepared if the company engages in credit sales as well as credit purchases. Let's write it down. Trade receivables and trade payables budgets are prepared to calculate the closing balance of trade receivables and trade payables respectively so these should only be prepared if the company engages in credit sales and credit purchases. The next thing to be considered is that the final balance on the trade receivables budget will appear as a trade receivables figure under current assets within our master budget. Let's write it down. The final balance on the trade receivables budget will appear as the trade receivables figure under current assets in the master budget We can repeat the same thing for the trade payables as well. The final balance on the trade payables budget will appear as the trade payables figure under current liability 
in the master budget. We also calculate the discount allowed as well as discount received within the trade receivables and trade payables budget respectively and these can also appear as expenses and other incomes within the master budget. Let's write it down. Calculation of any discount allowed and discount received. will be mentioned in the trade receivables and trade payables budget respectively and these will appear as the expenses and other incomes in the master budget and also remember that the preparation of such budgets will help managers make decisions on different issues such as the rate of discounts the provision for irrecoverable debts as well as different measures of credit control that they can implement within our business let's write it down preparation of such budgets will help managers make decisions on the rate of discounts, the provision for irrecoverable debts, and other measures of credit control okay so we have one two three four five points the next point can be that if these budgets are unrealistic then it might act as a demotivating factor for the staffs so if these budgets are unrealistic it might act as a demotivating factor for the staff now based on these factors we need to make a final decision so I would suggest the company to start preparing the budgets for trade receivables and trade payables as it facilitates the preparation of master budget and also helps in decision making process. Let's write it down. The company should start to prepare the trade receivables and trade payables budget as it facilitates the preparation of master budget and helps in decision making process All right, that is all for this question. If you found this video useful, make sure that you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.